This video is being released on November 11th, which is Remembrance Day in Canada and the Commonwealth, uh, Veterans Day in the United States, and has similar observations in most countries of the world. November 11th will be marked with uh, somber ceremonies of remembrance of the war veterans who did not return home to their countries after the war that they fought in. Um, and today I'm going to be uh, enjoying this Allegiant Lager, Canadian Lager, which is brewed by Whitewater Brewing in Ontario in partnership with the Royal Canadian Legion with proceeds going to the Legion to support veterans programs across Canada. And now to opening the mail. I'm after the dismal failure of that little privacy sticker thing. I'm trying something that uh, that I saw somebody suggest. Most of these are printed. Uh, these labels are printed on thermal paper. So I am attempting to use my heat gun to obliterate the uh, my address so that you guys don't stalk me. Um, oh, and I just obliterated the description. Oh well, let's just go with it. This is Expansion Board Module. It has... Oh, I cut through the bag. Oh, looks like a microcontroller of some sort. With header pins. Ah, it's an STM32 board. STM32 F103, to be specific. But it's in an Arduino-ish, well, Arduino Nano-ish type form factor. Um, so, okay, this is a board that I haven't had before, but it looks like we have all manner of, uh, of GPIO on it. If I could s keep from dropping the bloody thing. Let's look this guy up and see what else we can find out about it. STM32F103C8T6 ARM STM32 Minimum System Development Board Module for Arduino New from CZB6721960. Currently they're selling it for 245 plus 86 Canadian cents shipping. I got it for $2.70 with free shipping, so that's yeah, pretty close to the same thing, I guess. So what do we say about it down here? It's an ARM32 Cortex, uh, 72 megahertz. Wow, 64K flash, so that's a lot more than your average Arduino. Um, between four and 16 megahertz crystal. Um, okay, so you're not sure what it's got on it? Fine, be like that. Okay, I guess I should uh, do a little bit of investigating about this. Um, so apparently, you can't program this thing using that USB. You've got to use an external FTDI or something similar, or a serial USB to USB device. Okay, and hook it up like that. The other thing you have to do is add this line into your boards manager, your other boards, and okay that, and then go into the board manager and install it. And then once you have, choose it off the list. Hmm, I don't have a port right now. Okay, so I'll have to go and hook it up and uh, I'll see if I can get this Blink Sketch to jump onto it. Okay, I did uh, a little bit further reading and found out that uh, this jumper, the jumper on that side needs to be in the boot mode one position. So the jumpers have to look like that to program it. And then both of them back in that direction, the boot mode zero to actually run a program. So, so all the tutorials that I found said to use an FTDI. I tried it a few times and couldn't get it to work, but I pulled out my old faithful CH340 and connected that up to program with a little jumper in programming mode, sent the blink sketch to it. And then when we take the programming wires off, Put that back into normal mode. I'll just power it from here just for convenience. Oh look, it's a blink sketch. It works. So, um, 
the basics, serial programming, set the serial programming in the Arduino IDE, TX and RX on A8 and A9 over here, boom, done. This USB port here is just a power port, it's not for programming. I'm going to play with this in depth more later, but that's the short strokes. Right, on to the next thing. Next we have CH Multifunctional Tool. Hmm, after cutting through the inside bag on the last one, I'm a bit more gentle. It's in a squashed box. Ah, okay. Um, I was, several months ago, I was looking for a new and different everyday carry. So I bought a whole bunch of really cheap ones on auction. And this is one of those. It's a little multi-tool with a carabiner built into it. So it's got uh, a couple of inches measurement up there. It's got a little abrasive there. Uh, it has this little rotating thing with a small straight blade screwdriver, a medium that looks like it might try and double as a Phillips screwdriver. Another one over there, and that says wire strip, but I think that's when you, that's a wire stripper when used in conjunction with this little blade here. Okay, here's a, a random piece of wire. Put that through there, and hmm. Well, I mean, it does it, I guess. Okay, that's something. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, oh, this, they claim, is a wrench for 5 sixteenths, half inch, and 3 eighths nuts. Okay, I don't have any of those handy. I'll take your word for it. It's probably not all that great. Uh, there's a quarter inch and 5 sixteenths nut kind of driver. A little pry thing. Okay, um... I'm sure it could be used as a bottle opener. Uh, all right, 20 and 1, they say. Let's see what they call the 20 things on their listing. 20 in 1 stainless steel screwdriver wrench keychain EDC pocket multi tool from CNC Motor Shop. Um, they're selling it for $2.47 at the moment. I got it for $2.30, um, so it's not that much of a deal, I guess. But whatever, it's uh, it's interesting. Let's see what the 20 things are. Okay, we have a measuring ruler, we have a wire stripper, we have a bottle opener. Three is the bottle opener? Oh, okay, I can see that. It's kind of weak, but... Uh, quick release, a box opener. Five is a box opener. Oh, it's all serrated edge there. Didn't even notice. Quarter inch wrench, small Phillips flat eyeglass screwdriver. Yeah, that's a little bit thick for that. Large flat spoke wrench. Ah, that's what that is. Okay, that might work. Nail cleaner, right. Razor sharp cutting blade, 13. Yeah, it's on the inside. What the hell are you going to use that for? Except for wire stripping. Uh, medium Phillips, 5 16 Pry bar, 3 8 half inch, 9 16 And a file. I think I'm going to keep looking. The one thing that this thing can't be is a knife. This little serrated edge is pretty weak sauce. It's not even sharp, really. Oh, well, it was a cheap experiment, I guess. Next thing we have drill times one. That is not a drill. But in some ways, it's better than a drill. It's an assortment of collets for Dremel and Dremel-like uh, tools. We've got a variety of different shank sizes, which is good. And, uh, okay, let me just grab the Dremel. Actually, I grab a couple of them. I grab the standard high-power one and one of these little battery-operated ones. Let's see if these collets fit. I assume they will. They don't. Oh, you bastards. Let's see if it fits this little guy. Not thinking so. No. 
Well, not as standardized as I thought. So the standard Dremel coats are 4.3 millimeters in the shank, and these ones are 4.8. 10 piece brass drill chuck collet bits, 0.5 to 3.2 millimeters, 4.3 millimeter shank. That's what I ordered. That's what it says or that's what I actually measure the real ones that I've got. See, says so right there, 4.3 millimeters. That's the ones I ordered. Paid dollar sixty-four. Currently he's got them on auction and they're trying to sell for 263, but whatever from uh, this guy, 10 per 365. That's upsetting. Unfortunately, I bought them so long ago that I can't uh, open a claim anymore for him sending me the wrong damn ones. You can get 4.3 and 4.8, and 4.8 is what I actually got, but I ordered 4.3. Damn it. Wire. One times wire. Where is it in there? That is a wire. That looks like one of those thermocouple, no, uh, not thermocouples, um, resistive temperature sensors and waterproof again you may recall the last time i had one of these it was a little bit larger one but i proved its waterproofness by measuring my beer i'm not gonna bother doing this again um you can go back to that uh, video where i opened this last one i'll link it up there and uh you can see my experiments with it and how it works and everything basically it's a resistor it's calibrated it changes its uh, its resistance based on the temperature. It changes fairly fast. It's relatively accurate. Waterproof temperature sensor temp probe. Thermistor NTC 10K B3950. 2 meter, 3 meter, 10 meter, 20 meter. I got a 1 meter. Uh, this is from SKT Flyer. Uh, I bought it from him at auction for 53 whole cents Canadian. Uh, and considering he's selling it for 287 right now, that's not bad. However, other sellers are selling them right now for even cheaper, for like three of them for a buck twelve. So shop around. The prices have changed. Uh, and this is actually the thicker one, it's not the thinner one, but it serves the same purpose. And the last thing in is case times one. Must be a small case. It's not a case at all. Oh, okay, I see what this is. Um, this is a 3.5 millimeter, um, aka standard 8th inch headphone jack on that the end, to uh, three screw terminals on this side. That would have come in handy for the uh, little audio amplifier project I was playing with last week just to uh, not have to solder up jacks and put clip leads and stuff on. I could have just plugged straight into there and wired straight into my board and be done with it. I think that'll come in nice and handy, actually. 3.5 millimeter stereo female jack to AV screw video AV Ballon terminal plug adapter. Got this from Passion 201314. I got this for 72 cents at auction. Currently they're selling it for $1.30, so not a huge saving, but any savings is better than nothing, right? Now, this, I want to take a little bit of exception to that. A ballon is, the short for balance unbalanced. Or normally, that is a transformer in the middle of something to put a balanced circuit on one side and unbalanced circuit on the other side. This is not that. These are, or the 3.5 millimeter jack is an unbalanced circuit, and this is just straight wired through inside with no components in there at all, and it's just straight screw terminals out. So it is not a ballon. But this right here is the accurate and fairly true description, and a bunch of people are selling these things, as you can see. This seemed like such a good idea that I've uh, been scooping up a couple more on auction and they'll come in eventually. Um, but as I said, I think they're going to be really handy when I'm tinkering with audio projects on breadboards and stuff. So here are today's Mailbag Monday items. 
as always, a mixed bag. And unfortunately this week, a couple of disappointments. But that happens. Um, when, when you're buying stuff as cheap as possible, just to, just for fun, you never know. Sometimes there, it's going to work out and it'll be awesome. Like this and this, and sometimes it'll be a disappointment. So be it. Now you know. Um, so you don't have to waste your couple of bucks. I'm wasting mine. Actually, I'm kind of wasting my Patreon's couple of bucks. But be educated. Don't waste your time on these things. Um, so the this guy took five weeks to get here. The STM32 took 27 days. The temperature sensor, the thermistor, took one month. The collets took 17 days. So I guess that's good that they came fairly quickly. It sucks that they're the wrong size and they're not what I was what I was expecting. And oh yeah, this thing took exactly 30 days as well. This little carabiner thing. That's fine. We'll just pretend those didn't happen and we'll focus on these guys because they are going to be useful. I don't know what I'm going to do with the uh, that needs the kind of power that this STM32 has in it, but uh, when I come up with that sort of a project at some point in the future, I'll have one. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters for helping me uh, finance this silliness. Um, and Thank you so much to the veterans. I'll talk to you later.